In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my top 10 favorite photos that I took in 2022 and discussing my 2022 goals and if I succeeded at those. I apologize for the kind of messy dorm room here and for the uh, you know non-professional setup of the camera and everything. Um, I'm in my dorm room at Togody Mountain Lodge, which is thousands of miles from home and thousands of miles from my studio. Um, so I just had to make do with this to film these end of the year videos. But despite the very unprofessional studio here, still wanted to make this video to end out the year and to kind of look back on all the different photos I've taken and the very best ones that I'm most proud of. So let's jump into it with number 10. Number 10 is going to be this moose environmental portrait that I took back in May. Um, the thing that I really love about this photo is one, the colors with all these oranges and reds you get in here and then the tans in here and the greens in the background. And two, the framing. I love the way that this log kind of frames the bottom of the frame and then even comes up right here and kind of splits between these two moose and makes this moose the focal point. And just the way that it really frames the photo and this tree also kind of helps to frame the moose and this diagonal one as well you know kind of brings your eye down in just all these different things uh, kind of help frame the photo and I just felt like it was a really um, well-made environmental portrait that I was happy with how it came out um, and it was one of my first environmental portraits that I ever made that I was like okay this is really something that I'm proud of um, so yeah this comes in at number 10 um, not my favorite by any means but I still really like this photo and then coming in at number nine is this grizzly bear family portrait this photo I took the very first day within like an hour of arriving in the GYE this year and you can see that this is basically a really simple photo it's just a mother grizzly and a cub out in uh, kind of a sagebrush meadow with some willows back here in the background um, a little bit of rainfall as you can see um, and this photo I just love because it just was a really cool capture of this mother with the cub. Um, I think I have some better captures of grizzly bears that we're going to get into later um, in the list, which is why this one only ranked in at number nine. Um, but I still really love this photo. I love that they're both kind of looking back and uh, the pose and everything is just really good. And not to mention, this was a really pretty, very blondish white mother bear. Um, so just love this family portrait and uh, was, was very happy with how this one came out. Then coming in at number eight is mirroring mom. That's what I call this image. It's this bison mother with uh, her red dog in the background and they kind of have that exact same pose in these sagebrush meadows and it's kind of like the, the calf is mirroring the mother there um, and the, the mother's you know uh, chin right here acts as kind of a frame around the uh, edge of the calf and it's all in this very beautiful frosty snowy environment from a spring snowstorm. Um, and I love this image. This is one of my favorite images that I've taken but the reason that it didn't rank higher is because as you can see when you zoom in it's a little bit soft. Um, sharpness is, is not this image's strong suit. Um, it's just got a little bit of motion blur, uh, just not tack sharp and uh, it's evident in the image when you zoom in on the mother. Um, when you look at it from this view, you can't really tell it, but if you were to try to print this and blow it up large, it's just not quite sharp, which is very unfortunate because I think this could make for an awesome print, um, but it just isn't quite tack sharp, which is why it ranked in at number eight. I just wish I had had a little bit of a faster shutter speed here. As you can see, I was shooting at 1 1 60th because I was trying to keep that ISO as low as possible to keep noise out, and uh, I paid for it by shooting at such a low shutter speed because I lost a little bit of sharpness. If I had bumped that up, you know, maybe to 2 50th or something, uh, maybe this problem could have been fixed. Um, but you live and you learn. Um, so moving on now from number eight, number seven is this elk environmental portrait that I took uh, back in October. Um, I really like this image just because the setting is just beautiful. You've got the Absaroka range in the background, you've got these uh, green lodgepole pines, you've got Yellowstone Lake, and you've got this yellow grass and sagebrush here. It just feels like a very Yellowstone setting, and it feels like Yellowstone in the fall. Um, and the storm clouds above, just, just really pretty setting, and then you've got this big bull elk right out there in it, um, and I just really like how that came out. I feel like this is one of my better environmental portraits. Um, however, it didn't rank, you know, even in the top five because of a few different things. For one, I feel like the composition could have been a little better. I would have liked to, you know, have the elk maybe be a little higher up in the frame and, and bring the frame down a little bit, but I was capturing this on a split second, literally right after this, his head dropped, he kept moving and, and I didn't get any more photos uh, that were even this good. Um, so, because of that, because of how quickly I had to capture this and how quickly the moment was happening, I didn't quite get the composition I wanted. Um, and on top of that, the elks posing here is just not exactly as great as I would hope. Um, you've kind of got this grass coming in over his mouth, which I don't like, and his head is a little bit down. Um, I wish it was up a little bit more um, to have more of, you know, kind of like that dominant bull elk pose. Um, so just those two little things brought this image down for me. I do really like it still. I love the scene. I think that this scene had incredible potential and I think that I did a good job with it but didn't quite maximize it um, because I didn't have enough time there and I just jumped out of the truck and shot what I could take before he moved on. 
Um, so that is image number seven. Coming in at number six is another grizzly bear family portrait. Um, the reason that this one ranks higher than number nine is just because I like this scene better and I like the way that the family portrait works better in this scene. Um, this was taken the exact same night, just about you know 20 or 30 minutes later. And uh, I just really love how you have the mother bear in focus up here, kind of leading the way. And then you have the two cubs with both of their heads up out of focus in the background. And I love the way that um, the, the poses on them are just basically perfect. I mean, you have this cub's nose right here and the eye and everything, which is right above the sagebrush and then right in between the sagebrush here. Like nothing overlaps there that shouldn't overlap. His head is up and he's looking in this direction as he's following his mother around the edge of the sagebrush bush. And then this cub is kind of looking off in this direction, has a really nice pose as well. And just overall, I feel like the poses were perfect for these bears. They're in the perfect position where you can see all three faces and you can clearly see that this sagebrush bush here is what the mother just came around and these two cubs are following behind her coming around it as well and the fact that they're a little bit out of focus puts the focus mainly on the mother but tells the story of the cubs following behind the mother and following in uh, her footsteps so I just really like this photo and I love the really really nice blue tone that it has to it um, from that uh, you know very dark twilight uh, light this was what 5000 ISO 1 250th of a second so you can imagine this was very dark by this point for me to be shooting at 1 250th and still have to use 5000 ISO and not to mention f4 as well um, so the one thing though that I do wish was better about this photo is a little more background blur all these sticks back here are a little distracting and I wish that uh, those had been farther behind the bears so that there would have been more background blur but um, did the best I could with it and I'm still really happy with how this came out. So next moving into the only landscape image on this list This is number five and this is one that I took in Death Valley National Park um, I call this photo sand dune sunset um, This was a sunset shoot that I did in the Mesquite Flat Dunes in Death Valley this spring and uh, I, This is probably honestly my favorite landscape photo that I've ever taken. Um, I love the way that the clouds come in and you can see a little bit of golden sunset light coming in on this side versus this you know darker blue light over here these cool tones mixing with the warm tones in the middle i love that gradient of warm to cool um, in the background and then just the the layout of the dunes um, these leading lines all coming in and leading in towards the center of the frame and towards the highest dune in the entire dune field back here which looks small in this frame but that's only because it's so far away um, I just love the way that the lines come in and lead towards that and uh, I, I just love the textures that you get like in this area beautiful textures in the sand um, almost looks like it was made up and just you know you can see all the way throughout the dune field way out here all these beautiful textures throughout the sand um, that just really adds so much to this image um, so this came in at number five um, simply because you know I, I feel like this image is probably the best I could do in this setting but there are other images that I just like better um, there's nothing necessarily wrong with this one like some of the ones before it um, but I just feel like there are other ones on the list here that I like better. Um, but now, moving on to number four, we have this image of a great gray owl. And uh, getting into why I like this image, um, one, I just really love the colors in this image. I love the, the tan kind of gradient and, and kind of haze that's coming up in the foreground. And this was actually from grass that was right in front of my camera lens, like, you know, right in here. Um, that was uh, just, you know, right in front of the lens and right at the bottom of the lens. Um, that I was able to, to totally blow out and blur out by focusing on the owl and that created this kind of tan haze in the bottom of the uh, frame that, that kind of blurs all that out and brings your eye up towards the owl. Really love that tan coloration over kind of the perch here um, that simplifies this lower part of the frame and then I love the dark green background and uh, the background blur back here and how you can kind of see that there's you know some logs back in there and some trees but you can't totally tell it's mostly blown out it has a really nice green tone to it and then I just love how, how tack sharp and how detailed the owl is the feathers on these guys are just magnificent and beautiful and uh, the 500 f4 did a great job of capturing that and i really love that um, when i'm able to blow it up on a screen like this and look at it um, so that is why this image came in at number four next moving into the top three coming in at number three is this photo that i call antelope and aspen this is probably my favorite photo that i got this fall um, this is just a really unique and cool capture in my opinion because not only do you not often see aspen stands in Yellowstone, this is honestly the only mature aspen stand that I know of that is close to the road in Yellowstone, but you also don't see pronghorn near aspens that often anywhere, let alone in Yellowstone. 
Um, so it was really cool to be able to capture this. And I watched this pronghorn moving through the landscape for probably 30 minutes and was just hoping that it would go in front of this aspen stand. I saw it moving in the right direction and just had my fingers crossed. I moved into position, walked out about 50 yards from the road and just sat and waited and hoped that he would come out in front of it. And lo and behold, he did and turned and looked directly at me. It was almost as if he was posing for the image. And I captured this photo of uh, this antelope with this beautiful um, orange and green and, and yellow aspen stand right behind it. And like I said, this is my favorite photo from fall and one of my favorites I've ever captured. I just love how this image is and it honestly panned out perfectly. Next up, number two is this photo of this black bear family that I took in the Smoky Mountains. And what I love about this image is the foreground and background blur. I just love this kind of grayish blue cast and the green grass up here. And I love this tree because it kind of grounds the image and gives it some context and lets you know that this is in the Smoky Mountains um, because, you know, these, these large mature um, walnut trees are kind of iconic to Cades Cove. You see them all over Cades Cove in the Smokies. So this kind of grounds the image and uh, I think adds something to it. Um, it is a little bit distracting with all these sticks in the background, which I don't like, but I would rather have it there and have it, you know, give some context to the image and then just have it be gone and it just be this, this kind of grayish background behind it. I like the tree being there. Um, give some context to it and, and some habitat for the bears. Um, and then also I love the lighting on the bears. I love this very faint orange rim light that you can see around the edge of the bears because this was right at sunset and the sun was setting behind them. And it created this little rim light that was really pretty and really makes the bears pop in this frame. Um, so yeah, I love that about it. Love the lighting, love the setting, and uh, just came out exactly how I was hoping it would. And coming in at number one is this photo that I call Snowstorm Grizzly. Um, this photo is just a dream shot for me. Um, it's the grizzly portrait that I've always wanted. It's full frame, basically no cropping necessary. I think I just cropped a little bit off this edge, but basically none. Um, it's got the, the snow falling around it with those kind of blurred out snow droplets and then the more in focus ones. You got snow on the bear's fur, on the bear's face, and then this nice green sagebrush all around it. Um, and it just came out exactly how I was wanting. Background blur, tack sharp focus on the bear, tons of detail in the fur. Um, yeah, it's just honestly a dream shot for me and exactly the portrait of a greater Yellowstone grizzly bear that I've always dreamed of. Um, this is exactly what I've wanted. Um, obviously, I'm going to keep shooting bears and I'm probably going to get shots that I like even more than this, but as far as just simple portraits of bears, this is the shot that I've always dreamed of and I'm very happy with how it came out. Um, and so while it might not be as unique as an image like, you know, antelope and aspens is, um, it still is just a dream shot for me that I wanted for so long um, and that's why it came in at number one. Losing light quick here outside having to crank up those ISOs because it's almost night and I'm trying to use some natural light from the outdoors. Um, but to quickly wrap up this video, let's next move into talking about my 2022 goals and if I succeeded at those. The first goal was upload weekly. Obviously, I didn't succeed at this, unfortunately. Um, it just didn't pan out and I had long spans where I didn't upload at all. Um, this is a goal that I'm dropping for 2023 because I found that to create the quality of videos that I want to create, it just it doesn't make sense to upload weekly. It just uh, just can't pump out the quality of videos that I want to on a weekly upload schedule. Next is get 10,000 subscribers. We didn't quite get there, but man, we got close. We're at like 9,300 at the time of recording this, so we're very close, and uh, I honestly am satisfied with where we got. And I want to thank you all for all the support and for helping me get to there because it's, you know, thanks to you guys, the people who follow me and subscribe, that I've almost reached that 10,000 goal. Um, so thank you guys. And don't forget, I am giving away a free trip to Alaska when I hit 10,000. So if you aren't already a subscriber, subscribe because it's going to be given away to one of my subscribers. Next up is return to the GYE for summer and fall and uh, continue to build out my portfolio here. I think I did that successfully. Um, I think as you've seen in the 10 images I just showed, um, I, I was able to capture some pretty cool stuff in the GYE this year and uh, showcase summer, spring, and fall in the park. And I'm pretty happy with how that came out. These images are um, exactly what I was hoping for out of this uh, season in Yellowstone. So I think I succeeded at that one fully and uh, I'm very happy with what I captured there. Um, next up was be more active on Instagram. Um, I wasn't as active as I'd hoped to be this year, but I was more active. Um, so I'm satisfied with that goal. Like I said, didn't quite get as active as I wanted to. I wanted to like at least make two posts a week and maybe two reels a week. Didn't quite do that, but I was a lot more active and I grew a lot on Instagram. So I'm very happy with that goal and uh, how that's panned out this year. 
Um, next up, make more money off wildlife photography this year than I did last year. I've definitely done that. Honestly, this year, I've probably made three or four times the money on wildlife photography that I made last year. Um, so definitely succeeded at that and I'm very happy with how that came out. I uh, made a lot of revenue and uh, definitely starting to get somewhere where I'm making a decent amount of money on this and hopefully within the next few years I can be doing it full time. Next is finish my bachelor's degree in wildlife biology. I did that. I finished just a few weeks ago and I've now got my degree in wildlife biology. So that goal was completed. And then finally the last goal was provide the best content possible for you guys and uh, I also feel like I did this. The quality of content this year was much better on this channel. I feel like I improved so much and made much better videos. And it seems like based on my growth this year on this channel, you guys really liked that content and that uh, you guys were satisfied with what I put out. Um, so I hope that's the case. I hope you guys liked the content and I hope you were satisfied. Can't speak for you, but it seems like based on viewership and, and the growth on the channel that you guys were really satisfied as well. And yeah, that's all for my goals and my top 10 images of 2022. This video went on a little longer than I'd hoped, but thank you guys for sticking around this long if you have. It has been an awesome year. Uh, 2022 has been great to me and I've really enjoyed it. And uh, we've got some really cool adventures lined up for 2023 that I'm so excited about. And I just can't wait to get into that year. And hopefully it's going to be even better than this year. But until then, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed all the content that I've put out this year and this video. And I'll see you guys in 2023.